Hey, how's it going? We're going to be taking a look at this motorized bike carburetor and seeing if we can uh, take it apart real quick and put it back together. So this is on the 80cc, 60cc, or 66cc, depends on how you measure it, I guess, uh, motorized bike kit, the standard kind of little uh, China thing that you can get. But anyways, we'll go ahead and take it apart and see what's going on here. So here's where the throttle cable will eventually go into the carburetor. It's going to uh, expose the slide that's inside. Be careful when you're taking it out. It's under spring tension, so just watch it when you take it out there. And you're going to tap out what's on the insides there. Okay, that's good. Okay, it should be a little... You might have to tap it pretty good. It, try not to bang it when you do it. But then that slide's going to come out. Okay. Along with uh, the needle. Right there. And then you got your spring and your cap. Alright. So that's that. When you go to put it back together we'll go a little bit more into where to set this because this has five grooves on this needle here and in the middle there that's just the halfway this is how to lean the uh or rich in the fuel coming out of the main jet there so we'll get back to that so there's that needle and now we're going to take a look at the bowl see what's in here haven't had this apart yet this is a brand new kit I've been meaning to get to okay so we'll get right here and take these two screws off Real quick. Usually, not, <clears throat> usually, uh, if I'm doing any screws, I'm using a uh, impact wrench, but not today. So here's the inside of it. Um, this is a pretty uniform round float that's in there, so you can't really screw that up putting it back in. And there's the uh, main jet. These can actually be changed if you need to go uh, a lot richer you know if you come to find that out that's jetting it so you can buy different jets of the same uh, that'll fit in here but the little metering hole down in there is uh, what's going to determine you know how fast this thing can go how much fuel the engine can get so that's the inside of it not much there. Underneath here is the uh, it's the float lever. And under that, if you can see in there, is the needle. And the needle is the seat. And what I like to do, just to make sure it's... Uh, well, if I had a hose on here, I would connect the hose here to the inlet, fuel inlet. And then blow on the hose with this thing upside down like this to make sure that there's no air passing underneath here past the needle and the seat okay and then i would uh lift it or turn it around like this and blow again in here and make sure that it flows freely when you blow through it which you can't i can't really fit my mouth on there or i blow in there but it looks like i mean it's brand new it looks like it's functioning properly and we'll just put this back together and get on with it. So this right here on the side is just your idle adjustment screw. That's all it's for. There is no other type of uh, mixture adjustment on these whatsoever. I'm putting this back in the wrong way. Okay, just want to go back on there. It doesn't really line up with anything necessarily. 
Like there's no ledge or anything. It kind of fits flat on there. You just got to line up the holes right. That's kind of cheesy, but if it works, I guess. Is that going in there? Yeah, I think that's about in there. Get that other one in. That's it. Good and tight. German torque. Okay. And behind here is just, uh, you got a little sponge inside of this thing. I guess I'll take it apart. And uh, screws are loose, so why not? These things can be a pain to line back up once you put them back together. I think it's got a pretty cool look, though. It kind of looks like a skull from behind. Oh, man, my back's starting to hurt. I'm getting old. Leaning over this table. It's not quite high enough. All right. Get this off. So that's what's inside of there. You have your little sponge that can come out. Then you have this plastic little protector over here. And here's where your choke choke lever. Boy, that, that choke. Okay, is that working? Okay. Test out the choke. That's got to be loosened up right there. So, yeah, I might go ahead and take get a little something on here or I might squirt some magic juice in there but that that choke action is way too heavy that's just you just want to be able to when you're riding especially if you want to turn that choke off just go over there and barely um, push it down so let's see if I got something that will fit that here I'm guessing a 5 sixteenths. Let's see if I'm right. Or if it's pretty close. I'd have to take this plastic piece off to get around it. Man, I was right on with that one. Yep. Okay, cool. That's more like it. Okay, so we just loosened that up. And that is a uh, fiber nut that's on there. So that's a lock nut. That's probably good. Um, it'll stay, hopefully on there and won't rotate itself off yeah that's much much better action on that so we'll just uh, put this back together and here's where it you gotta line this up with the uh, holes there then on the back get it going this can be kind of a pain If I can get lucky here. There it is. Okay, kind of popped in place. Like I said, this thing doesn't have to be this difficult. But yeah, so the plastic kind of came off there. So you got to line up the plastic with the actual body of the carburetor back there. And then try it again. Let's see. Okay. Should be going on there, all right. No, these things are just pain to line up sometimes. There we go. I think I got it. Got that one started. And is that one going? Yeah, it's going. Okay. So we get those kind of back in there. We'll never really have to go back in and mess with this, so I'm just gonna tighten them up real quick. Dog's barking. Okay, so this whole that whole China doll kit that they have been selling a whole lot of um, for the motorized bike kits, I guess it was based off of a uh, I just heard like a 1930s uh, Russian motorcycle, so. Just a little trivia. But anyways, here's the uh, here's the slide. And when you're putting this back in here, you're gonna line that up, the groove here on the slide, with that pin that's going down the uh, 
the body of the carburetor there in the cylinder. If you can see that, hopefully. So I'm just going to put that back in there. But first, I'll show you how this goes. So you have the uh, slide's going to be going, yeah, this way with the pin in here, the metering pin. And by the way, if you need to rich in your mixture, okay, if you're at like higher ele elevations or something like that, what you need to do is just imagine, you know, full open throttle. When you go full open throttle, the needle lifts up. And so that's the most fuel that you can have. Whatever, wherever you're at right there is the most fuel that engine's going to get through the carburetor. Now, if you were to lower this down, okay, you're going to be pulling, lower, lowering the clip down into the next notch brings this actually up more okay so bringing the clip down is going to richen it and that's at wide open throttle the needles all the way up if you brought this down and lowered the clip it would bring it up a little higher you see so and that's how you would richen the mixture so right now it's at uh, you can start out at the center groove and then go from there or if you think you're going to need it richer you know, lower that clip down to the next notch or the last notch if you think you're going to need a really rich mixture for some reason. And in these motors, 50 to 1 works great. You know, if you go by the uh, the recommended uh, fuel oil mixture ratio, two cycle mix ratio, I think it's like six, the uh, manual that comes with this these things says like 16 to 1. And then after like a, a 300 mile break-in period or something, uh, you can go to 20 to one and then run it regularly like that on 20 to one. That's crazy. That's way too much oil. So um, they'll smoke and get all nasty, but if you lean them out, these things can handle 50 to one. You might want to go a little thicker on the oil if you want to, you know, in the beginning, but uh, that's uh, up to you totally. So when it goes back together, it's like this. You would put the needle in with that clip right in there, the E-clip, they call it. Well, here's the E-clip or the Pac-Man. Anyway, the needle slides in to the slide right there, to the center hole. Then when you're putting this back in, this Pac-Man or this E-clip, see, you want the slots to line up where the E-clip slot is. You want that to line up eventually with the slide. So you just pop it down in there. You can't kind of keep looking down in there to make sure that uh, they're lining up. If not, you can take a little slot screwdriver to line them up. Because now what comes next is the throttle cable is going to come in and lay down in here. And it's going to come out this way with the uh, spring. You know, the throttle cable through the spring. And then, you know, we'll put the uh, cap back on. Line it up with the pin in the uh, throttle body there of the, uh, it's not the throttle body, but it's the uh, body of the carburetor. Right in there where the pin is, we'll line those up, get them all back together, and we'll be good to go. So that's about it on this one. And I'm not gonna put this all back together for you. Um, you can back up the video and see how it came apart, but that's about it.